Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and today I want to say first sorry. Uh, last week I did miss out on one of my archetype videos. I suddenly went to PaizoCon because I didn't realize it was so close. And I got my ticket literally the day before and I spent all weekend getting, you know, networking and learning some new information. And there's a lot of crazy things happening soon on the channel. Uh, we got some possibly uh, some collabs or at least some guest people to show up on Table Talk coming up in the future. As well as I picked up a lot of swag, a lot of swag. They, they had too much at the event, not enough people showed up, which was good for me because I could pick up a lot of things that I will end up giving to you all so uh be on the lookout there will be some giveaways in the future so if you're interested in that or you know someone who might please like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe so that you can keep up whenever we go live because there might be a giveaway uh happening soon i i will do my best to try to you know let everyone know ahead of time i'm still this is the first giveaway i'm doing so i want to make sure i do it right and don't do anything that's either going to sink us financially or just be straight up illegal but it is coming soon so you know please keep an eye out i'm very very excited but as the title of this video might indicate, I picked up some secrets from PaizoCon when it comes to what's coming up in the near and farther future. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into the notes I took here. I was there in the stands, you know, writing down in my phone all the notes I could, and then I have gone online to pick up some visual aids to help us and help me in this description. So let's talk about what I found at PaizoCon. So starting with Dark Archive, as that was the biggest one for me personally, the book is coming out in a little over a month now or at the end of July. Uh, so what did I find out? Well, first of all, they've updated the art for the characters and the new art for, uh, I think it's, Oh, goodness, it's Mios and Theon. I want to say the Psychic and the Thaumaturge. We'll say that. I don't want to go and look it up right now. But for, for the two new Iconics, they updated the art, and the art looks absolutely fantastic. They gave the Psychic so much more color and flair. And Mios, the, the Thaumaturge, got a lot more... I, I, I feel a lot more flashy with their garb. It looks a little less like... You know, they were just covered in a bunch of talismans, and now they look like they got some armor and everything with it as well. The new colors are really good. Also, we got a good look at the cover of the book. In fact, I got to see the cover of the book in person behind some pex plexiglass, which, you know, never before have I wanted to commit crime so bad as to steal some of the books from this case here. But, you know... Overall, it was really, really fun and interesting, but let's talk about what new things they're planning to add when it comes to Dark Archive. So if you didn't know, the Psychic is an occult spellcaster, and they made the subconscious mind aspect of the class a lot more straightforward. So more or less, the Psychics are split into the conscious mind, which affects kind of the kind of cantrips they get what kind of spells they may have access to and everything like that. And then the subconscious mind, which they've added two more here, the uh, the explored, what was it? The explored, sorry, the gathered lore and the wandering reverie. And they've also added some more uh, conscious minds, but the subconscious minds I want to mention because the subconscious minds determine what key uh, key attribute you use to cast your spells uh it might still be intelligence and charisma that's what it was in the play test they could add some wisdom in there or who knows i'm gonna say it's still probably gonna be key like intelligence and charisma as there's four it splits evenly and if they did four, I don't know what the fourth one would be. It would have to be a duplicate of another one. So it makes the most sense that it's just going to be those two key attributes, which is pretty good. And they're going to be adding a lot more psychic type abilities to the occult spell list, which is absolutely necessary. As I feel like anyone who's played an occult spellcaster has kind of felt... Their choices were rather limited on the spells they could take if they wanted to be effective in combat. Not that 
a lot of the occult spells weren't effective in combat, but, you know, some of them were just a lot heavier in the debuff category, and there wasn't a lot of damage opportunities. And so that was kind of restricting for the playstyle overall, and I think this will be very good in addition to that. Along with the Psychic, the Thaumaturgs got a little bit more evened out. They they made it a little bit more straightforward, they, but there is still a lot of depth. They added three new, uh, what were they called? Three new, they added three new implements, the Regalia, Bell, and Tome implements. And they divided all the implements into three different categories of three. Three is a very big thing when it comes to the Thaumaturge. And when it comes to that, they have active implements that have actions they can perform on their turn. They have passive implements that give them special buffs consistently, passive buffs, and then they have a reactive implements that allow them to do certain things when it's not their turn. So the Thaumaturge, I think, is looking really good. I think they got a lot of things going. A lot of the initial jank, uh, if you saw my earlier video on my first impressions on them, I, I thought that there was a little bit of jank, and I thought that some of the themes for the Thaumaturge weren't really meshing well. Uh, I do think that they've answered a lot of this, but we won't know 100% until the book actually comes out. And I want to mention about this as well. Until the book comes out, a lot of what I have here is going to be pure speculation. There's not going to be 100% information because they didn't give 100% information beyond like these last couple slides where they were showing, you know, some of the class's initial features. Even then, they didn't talk about exactly how they worked or what they changed from the playtest. So a lot of the information I have for you is just going to be half. It's going to be half of what they showed us and half about what I'm going to speculate because they didn't give us everything. Uh, but yeah, the Dark Archive is coming out with quite a lot. The Dark Archive has sections called Case Files, and each of these sections address some paranormal aspects that the book is going to provide. Like, for instance, the cryptids, where there are going to be monsters that are going to be different than the standard that appear in Galarian. Now, it's really hard to differentiate between a supernatural creature and just a magical creature, because in Galarian, there's so many creatures that in our own world we would regard as being supernatural. So what makes a cryptid? Well, the cryptid creatures are going to be a lot more different. They're going to have abilities or powers that make no sense and do things that seem to break the rules of reality as far as Galarian is concerned. There's a lot of different types of things they're going to do for this. They're adding a new kind of monster traits or title. They're called rumored monsters. What I think they're going to do for this is they're going to give monsters extra abilities, unique abilities, and you're just going to set the rumor tag on them, and it can be from any, like, beast or magical beast kind of creatures. I don't think it's going to be anything like humanoid creatures that are going to be adjusted, but there are going to be, you know, the same magical beasts that you should know the powers for, but this is going to be a rumored one that is going to have its own unique set of abilities and unique traits. Not only that, but this section will be coming with a new set of archetypes, probably cryptid hunters or investigators, and those who are touched by cryptids and forever changed by them. As they mentioned in the uh, on the live stream, that the these archetypes are going to be altered by these cryptid creatures, cursed maybe in some way or have some ability. It's very very interesting, and they're going to have some extra items included in this as well. Well, probably items that help mine cryptids and maybe items made from cryptids as well. I'm very, very excited for this. Secret Societies is next on the list and Secret Societies are very interesting. Now, if you've looked at the world book, you know that there are some organizations and they often come with their own archetypes, their own special unique items and maybe other benefits for characters who are associated with them. This is going to be very much like the Firebrands, the Hell Knights, all these organizations that came from the world book. And I'm very excited for this. They didn't really give too much information though they did show us uh some pictures that i'll show up on here as well as uh there are 
definitely going to be some interesting interactions and interesting uh, ideas for different kind of campaigns located in this section alone. Deviant abilities are going to be unique archetypes or just extra abilities given to the characters that don't come from magic or divine. They come from some paranormal source. And one of the ones they were talking about was the dragon abilities, where your character has dragon-like abilities despite having no dragon heritage, nor having anything actually directly connecting them to dragons. But for some reason, they have the ability to use like a breath weapon or maybe they might exude something like an aura of fright. It's very, very interesting. I do love the idea that these come from some paranormal source. It really gets the mind going. It really makes you think, what's paranormal in a world with magic and monsters? I, I'm very excited and the Deviant abilities are just going to give that power to the players and I think there's going to be so many really fun builds just with this section alone. The mirrors and imposter section is going to talk all about doppelgangers, weird mirror reflection people, or clones. It's going to be a very interesting kind of, you know, there's someone else like you kind of paranormal idea. And it's coming out with a new ver versatile heritage called the mirror imposter or the mirror reflection. I can't remember exactly what they called it, but you essentially are playing a mirror duplicate of another person in the world and this versatile heritage has a lot of different as aspects you could be a, a clone or a a paranormal mirror reflection or maybe the result of a ritual that has gone wrong in any case this is going to be a very interesting and very fun versatile heritage and very unique as this is something that you don't really think about when it comes to ancestries or heritages to have something like this and how it might affect your characters. So I really think there's going to be some really fun builds and Paizo has already shown that a lot of the heritages they've added to the game add just a deep level of quality and intrigue to the game. So I'm very, very excited for this one in particular. The cults section is going to be super exciting. They're going to talk about all the various cults of Galarian that have shown up in many of their APs and maybe some that have not shown up in their APs but have been hinted at in the lore. This is going to be really interesting from a lore perspective, but they're also adding a new archetype called the Living Vessel where your character becomes the conduit or the container for some supernatural entity that uh, uses its power through your character. It's really, really cool. The art for this section was really, really exciting. I, I literally can't wait for it, but not only that, you're, they're adding apocryphal divine magic. So divine magic is going to be getting a bit more spells in this section. And that's really good. I hope they add some divine cantrips that are a little bit more capable of dealing some damage. I know a lot of divine spellcasters really struggle with this aspect of it. So I really hope these apocryphal divine magic spells really help with that. And not only that, but it's just super interesting to think of like what Cthulhu-esque divine spells would be in pathfinder so this is a very very exciting section and a lot is going to come out of this i think is going to change how some divine characters are going to be played which i think is very good and almost necessary to keep the game spiced up curses and packs was a very interesting section they didn't really have art that i felt would properly describe what the section was so i apologize if there's no art for this section but they have a lot of items and they're adding a lot more cursed items that they're giving the players that are not just bad you know they are not just negative to use all the cursed items that they're planning on adding give boons to the players for costs Maybe your character is perpetually fatigued, but they get the ability to use supernatural abilities. Or maybe uh, one of them was that your character, uh, they, it was like a key that they inserted into their stomach and it, it opened them up. And it made it so that their character needed to consume like twice as much food or something like that. But your character was also able to remove bad contents like poisons and stuff 
such from themselves a lot easier. So there's a lot of really cool things about this. They're also adding another archetype to this section, the Pact Binder, which is a lot more of a role play style archetype dedication, where whenever you come across a super powerful entity, you're able to make packs with them to gain special boons at probably some kind of cost. Overall, it's a very, very exciting section and cursed items really, really, really needed a more valid reason to show up in your games other than to be punishment for the players. So I think this is going to be a very good and very strong addition to the system overall. Temporal Anomalies is going to be a really big part. They're going to be adding all kinds of time magic, which is going to be very, very interesting. And not only that, but they're adding two really fun archetype dedications. They're adding the Chrono Mage and the or no the time mage and the chrono skimmer no i think i got those backwards let me check my notes here uh the time mage and chrono skimmer yeah time mage and chrono skimmer it's going to be a very they're both very very interesting the time mage i think is going to be another class archetype so you pick it when you start your class initially it changes uh you have to pick its dedication up at level two but you're going to get a bunch more uh, interesting abilities and they might just have it as a general spell casting type archetype dedication. Either way, it's going to be cool. They're going to get a bunch of spells and probably some focus spells thrown into the mix as well. It's very, very interesting. And then the Chrono Skimmer is a character archetype that is going to allow the character to alter time in certain ways to maybe like jump to the future or to play back time and get like intuition on what's coming up to give them bonuses or reflex saves and all that kind of stuff. These are all just my guesses, but I, I from what how are they are describing them, this is how I feel both of these are going to go, and it's going to add a bunch of timey-wimey fun stuff to Pathfinder, which I think is going to be really fun and very interesting, and hopefully... Paizo has demonstrated that they have a very keen mind to not break the game. Hopefully they make time travel make sense and d not create headaches for the GMs out there when the book comes out. The last section we're going to talk about when it comes to Dark Archive is going to be the Mindscapes. And the Mindscapes is going to be a fun aspect where you can go into mental mindscapes as special kinds of terrains with their own unique kinds of hazards and all kinds of stuff like this as well as they're going to be adding a new type of combat called psychic combat and psychic combat means you're using your mind to literally fight each other and this does mean that characters that are a little bit more mentally focused have an advantage but characters even like the barbarian who might have really good charisma with high intimidation might still be capable of defending themselves in this space it's not a guarantee that brainy characters are going to always succeed and i think this is going to be just another system to add to your games to make the story much more interesting as a fun flair for the event there is also a list of other things that i failed to mention uh first of all the psychic is going to be the the psychic got changed a little bit they're going to be adding a bit more emphasis on some of their abilities so they don't have as much in the way of focus cantrips anymore they now have more focus spell like abilities that do have very high impact so they're going to be making the psychic feel a little bit better they're not just an infinite psychic cantrip machine that's always using their psychic cantrips they're going to be now adding some extra oomph to the abilities at the cost of being focus skill points or focus points instead for the sake of balancing and for the sake of making psychics feel like they're very impactful in the game especially because the cantrips before were very minor and obviously they couldn't do a lot of damage because they could do them over and over again so i think this is a very good compromise and i think it really worked out overall uh something i did forget to mention in the mirror section as well is that they're adding a bunch of new hazards new paranormal hazards and haunts to the game so if you're a gm who's been really itching to throw your players into a haunted mansion this is going to be the perfect time to throw them in with a whole new list of things you can throw their way and make your life easier when it comes to coming up with new ideas on how to spook your players half to death or all the way depending on if they've crit failed their check they're also going to be adding a new set of paranormal adventures let me pull up the list here since i don't have them all memorized by name and I can't imagine anyone who would unless they're 
better at memorizing than I am. Uh, they're adding a bunch of new short adventures. These are one chapter kind of adventures. The Beast of Birch Frost, the Shaking the, uh, shaking the Helping Hand, A Song of Making and Unmaking, Lady of the Harvest, The Verdure of Ilbidos, Wishes in a Krasna Prudni, okay? Tomorrow's Feast and The Last Dream. And each of these are going to address different kind of paranormal events. Some of them are going to be dungeon delves. Others are going to be more investigative, mystery-style adventures. There's going to be cryptids. There's going to be weird creatures. There are going to be unique types of magics and spells. These are going to be very fun overall. And on top of that, they're going to be adding a new set of incident reports, which are story seeds. They give you maybe a stat block or an item block and then a narrative. And then they're going to let the GMs go with that. And they're going to be adding, I think, eight or ten of these to the book as well. They're going to be very, very interesting. They're going to let the players. These are what I really liked in something like anima beyond fantasy they give you a mystery that you can use as a kickoff for your story and the gm can then take it in the direction they want to take it these are really good and they're also especially good if you want to throw in a mid-adventure kind of side story or twist or something when your players kind of deviate to take away from the main campaign for a little bit let your players refresh on that and then get back on things i think story seeds like this are going to be really really huge there's going to be more magical items added to it and i just this section was really really fun and i apologize if this video is going to be really on the longer side there's a lot of secrets and i could have split it up into different parts dark archives being its own section in this section but I have so many videos to make in the week that I just really can't be bothered to split it up and make two separate videos, two thumbnails and all that. So we're just going to continue with some of the notes I picked up from the other things they're adding to the game as well. First and foremost, they're adding a new book just announced called the treasure vaults where they're going to be adding all kinds of new magic items there's going to be a section dedicated to improving alchemy and they're going to be adding to the crafting rules already in the game which i'm super excited for because the crafting rules are really good they might be adding new materials they might be adding new ways you can alter the length of time it takes to create items I am very excited for them to be adding to this rule system in general, and there's going to be a lot more magic items for the players so that there's going to be even more variety. And Pathfinder already has a lot of magic items, so this is going to be a very solid book overall, and I just, I absolutely can't wait for it. They have a new level 11 standalone invention called the Shadows at Sundown, which is out already. You can check it out. It's going to be a new uh, Kavorsen, you know, uh, Corvosa is a, an area in Galarian and the art here was really, really cool. Really, really creepy. Got some undead stuff going on and it's going to be a more horror themed adventure. I'm very excited for this section as well. And the standalone adventure is a level 11, which is really good. Level 11 is a really fun level range to play and this is going to be great for a nice short adventure if you don't have the time to dedicate to a year-long campaign uh further rp uh free rpg day where they give out like a free module to everyone they're going to be adding a new adventure uh for a full leshy party it's going to be called let me see here a fistful of flowers it's a really good one uh, I spoke a little bit with uh, the writer of the Leshies in general, Linda. She was very marvelous. I, I absolutely enjoyed talking with her. And the Leshies are really great in this little free RPG. Uh, it's another standalone adventure. It's going to be great. It's for a whole party of Leshies. And it's got a, a whole bunch of fey hijinks and all kinds of stuff in it. It's going to be a really, really fun adventure. And if you love Leshies, I would highly check it out. And they'll probably be adding maybe some new Leshy stuff in it as well. They're adding, they're remaking some of the older modules for Pathfinder 2E. One of the ones they're going to be starting with is Crown of the Cobalt King, which is a 1 to 5 adventure path that is going to be continuing on, probably for a full 1 to 20. And the real interesting thing about this adventure path is that it was the one that started the Tyrant's Grasp, which is the big kind of meta plot of the Lost Omens arc. If you know the Whispering Tyrant and what he's done, this adventure played a part in those future events. So it's definitely... 
excuse me, it's definitely an, an adventure path you want to look into if you're interested in the history and lore of Lost Omens and Galarian. The new Impossible Lands book is going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be ta uh, talking mostly about the east coast of Garans, the southern continent. It's going to be talking about Nex and Geb, the two magical nations competing with each other. Nex being now a more wizard, magic-based society, and Geb being the nation of the undead. As well as they're going to be talking about Alkenstar and the Mana Wastes. So there's going to be all kinds of really fun stuff. In this section here, they're also going to be adding five new ancestries to this section as well. Uh, some of the pictures on here, one of them is sentient food that has uh, that has evolved to be its own kind of ancestry, which I think is super interesting. And they have these short little rhino people that are going to be really cool as well. A lot of very visually interesting ancestries. A lot of interesting lore that is going to be in this section as well. Uh, some of the things they also mention is there's going to be an ooze town where everyone in this town is made of some kind of ooze or ooze morph. It's going to be very, very exciting. And this book is going to offer a lot more as far as weapons are concerned, new spells possibly. I, I do think that this book is going to be probably my favorite area book to come out the more the the Mwangi expanse was really really good but i think this one is just going to be even more fantastical and is going to have a lot of really really cool lore stuff and also alkenstar and dogen hold dogen's hold is going to be involved so there's going to be a lot more guns i feel coming out in these new books uh, it's something i'm just really really excited for and all this will be coming out in november so keep an eye out for this it's going to be a really good book and one i'm definitely going to be picking up and reviewing along with this new section they're going to be adding a new adventure path called the blood lords where you're going to be playing a bunch of undead lords of the nation of geb and it's going to be not necessarily an evil campaign but a campaign where you're dealing with lots of the undead and the various, you know, monarchies and hierarchies of the lands of Geb. It's going to be very, very interesting. And I think this adventure path especially is going to be incredibly interesting. Speaking on adventure paths, they're going to be adding Kingmaker, a full thick campaign book, real thick campaign book with all kinds of rules from the popular game by Alcat Games. They've been looking forward to this adventure path for a while and it's going to be a whole just big campaign book is going to be another one to 20. It's going to be a really, really solid one. And it's not going to be split up to modules like some of the APs. This is going to be a full 100% campaign book like Rise of the Rune Lords. And I think this is going to be really interesting. And if you're thinking about getting into the game and you maybe want to run for a game for your players, keep an eye out for this book because this is going to be a really, really good campaign book. And then not last but not least, they will be coming out with a little bit later the gate walkers adventure path as well it's going to be a very interesting one they're going to be talk. there's been a worldwide case of amnesia of for some reason there's going to be a lot of planes hopping going to different dimensions leaving reality entirely they mentioned so probably a lot of that psychic combat stuff that i mentioned before in the dark archive uh section they're adding a bunch of new stuff they're going to be adding archetypes to this ap as well that i think is going to give players access to psychic abilities so it not like being a psychic but you're going to have access to weird mental abilities new archetypes dedicated around you know, psychic-like abilities. I think this is going to be really good. I think it'll be a good addition. Whoops, sorry there. Uh, a really good addition to the game overall. But with that, I've been talking straight for probably 30 minutes now. So I'm going to rest my voice. PaizoCon was amazing. Uh, if you have not checked out my Twitter, please do so. I'm actually going to link my Twitter now uh, from now on down below in all the descriptions. You can check out my Twitter. I vlogged my whole time while I was there. And I got to meet a lot of really wonderful people in the space, uh, including no Nat ones for the first time in person as well. So if you want to hear some stories about that and see everything that's gone on, please check it out there 
And as I mentioned earlier, keep an eye out on the channel. We're, I, I got a lot of swag and stuff from PaizoCon, so we're going to be doing some giveaways in the near future. And I'm very excited to be expanding this channel. I feel like we're going to be having a lot of growth in the near future and a lot of very sudden growth. So get ready. The community is going to expand. And if you want to be a part of it, join our Discord. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to be going a lot of places, and I'd love to have you all come with me. But with that, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.